Committee still is going to be a little bit too committed to trust the system today. 
Please be seated. Uncontainable, irrepressible, bubbling up in, a, in an explosion of energy, what the weary long for, what children often embody, what makes the divine smile, joy. It cannot be paid for, but it's a priceless treasure. As we hope for your arrival, as we pray for peace in your living, as we wait and watch and wonder how you might reveal yourself to us, God, give us joy in your advent. Joy is not a commodity that can be bought or sold, but lives deep in the human spirit. Help us to hear the truth and believe it. Let go of what our consumer culture says will bring us happiness, money, success, a scramble to the top that leaves us flat. If we have robbed others of what they need in our clamor and quest for more than our fair share, please forgive us. Help us hear the call of John the Baptist to turn around and begin again. God of love, we were made in joy. May we live that way. We light a candle for joy. May it light the way. Thank you. Let us join in prayer. On this day of Advent, we come before you, O Lord. We come lifting our voices in songs of praise and thanksgiving. We come seeking to hear your voice, your call, your invitation to enter your presence. Accept our praise and hear our prayers, we ask, as we pray the prayer Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture this morning from the Old Testament, Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. It was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seeds to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Amen. Call your attention to the prayer of confession printed in the bulletin. Responses. O Lord of the Advent, as we approach you, we quickly become aware of our failures and our shortcomings. We receive your forgiveness, Lord. 
We have attempted to live as followers of Jesus, but we often fall aside and follow our own selfish desires and lose sight of him. Even the Christmas season reminds us of our selfishness and greed. You call us to celebrate life with a contagious joy, but we find more comfort in complaining about the ills and pains of life. You are a God of forgiveness, and your love is overwhelming. Hear us, love us, and forgive us as we quietly confess our sins. Amen. The good news is that God is a God of forgiveness. He cleanses us when we ask. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us join our hearts in prayer. With joyful hearts, 
we enter the Holy of Holies, Lord, into your presence. We enter with the excitement of Advent. We're grateful, Lord, that you invite us to come with our concerns, our needs, our troubles, our broken lives. And you welcome us and ask us to bring our, our heaviness and leave it with you. We seek healing and comfort for those concerned about their health. Healing for those suffering from infirmities and dealing with surgery and treatment. Touch us and heal us, we ask. We seek peace for those who are dealing with confusion and stress. We seek repairing of broken relationships during these days of Advent and Christmas. Your family and friends mean so much. And, oh, Lord, we're so aware of, of broken hearts and, and empty chairs at our tables over those whose passing makes these days so painful. Give us your peace, we ask. Restore the joy to our lives. And guide all of us to be sensitive to the needs of others, our masters. Physical needs, financial needs, and emotional needs, personal needs. Guide us to bring healing. And oh Lord, we want to acknowledge our gratitude for your many blessings to us. Out of your graceful heart, you teach us to love, and we're so grateful. You are the God of love. With full heart, we praise you. Please, our Father, make the joy of the birth of a Redeemer for us new and exciting. Help us to really celebrate and enjoy the promises of Emmanuel. All this we pray in your holy name. Amen. A hymn is 111 from heaven above.
us confirm our faith by using what's known as the Christmas Creed as printed in the bulletin. I believe in Jesus Christ and in the beauty of the gospel that began in Bethlehem. I believe in him whose spirit glorifies the little town who cometh only shepherd all the time and for whom the crowded in to find no room. I believe in him whom the kings of the earth ignored, whose paths were among the common people, whose paths were among the common people, whose welcome came from people of hungry hearts. I believe in him who proclaimed the love of God to be invincible, whose cradle was a mother's arms, whose home in Nazareth loved for its only wealth. The look at humanity made them Please be seated. Let us continue our worship as we bring our tithes and our offerings as a sign of our commitment before the Lord.
with grateful heart, Lord, we respond to your many blessings to us. We bring these gifts, these pledges, these commitments, these tithes and offerings to you. And praise and thanksgiving for your gracious love to us. We pray your blessing upon the gifts. You will use them to build your kingdom and to claim your love to a needy world. In Christ we pray. Amen. Please be seated. New Testament scripture today is from the second chapter of Luke, first 11 verses. This familiar story of the birth of Christ. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken for the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to register their own town. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and he was expecting a child while they were there. Time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths, placed him in a manger, because there was no room, no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flock by night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Amen. The word of the Lord. Let us look to God in prayer. Lord, speak to us words we need to hear. Open our eyes and open our hearts and open our lives to your gracious goodness and to Emmanuel. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Through Christmas we've talked about those, or Advent, we've talked about the four words of Advent, which talked about hope, we've talked about peace, today we talk about joy, next, next week is love, but joy is a great word, joy is at the very heart of God's message to us, Robert Louis Stevenson said, to miss the joy is to miss everything, it was a message from the angel. And as we look at that message, we see that it's about joy that God gives us. And in a sense, Luke is talking about the width of joy, the depth of joy, the breadth of joy, and the height of joy when we consider how God blesses us with that joy. The width of joy comes, we see, when the angels sang, the joy to all people. It had been something like 450 years since God had spoken directly to the prophets. And they were anticipating these years, waiting for God's promise, for God's Messiah. And finally it came. And you can catch some of the excitement they felt of hearing that God had spoken to them, that God had again promised fulfilled his promise. And those who gathered at the synagogue had waited for years, were celebrating 
that great goodness and a message of joy. Sometimes we in the church miss out on that joy. We tend to overlook it and don't observe it nor enjoy it. Oliver Wendell Holmes said he would have been a preacher if the preachers, so many preachers that he had known had been like undertakers. <laughs> and I think that's true of a lot of us. One church, or well, one family moved the church from the Episcopal Church to the Presbyterian Church. And somebody asked the son, the little boy, uh, how do you how do you like your new church? He said, well, I think we like it pretty good, but my mama, she misses the Episcopal lethargy <laughs> instead of liturgy. <laughs> C.S. Lewis described his life, how he became, his encounter with God, and how he got to know the fullness of God in his life and the title of his book, his autobiography, describing that is Surprised by Joy. Surprised by Joy. The reality of God's love for us and how God comes into our lives. In the Screw Tape Letters, he wrote that, that joy is different from laughter. The joy is something special, like young couples preparing to be married on the eve of their wedding the joy they experience, or the joy that's shared when families gather and renew their love for each other. The joy that's special, the Greek word makarios, it means a special fullness of life, and it comes with the encounter with God and seeing and knowing God's love for us and how we can be surprised by the joy that God gives us. One preacher at a children's sermon gathered all the children down front and he was going to talk about heaven. He said, what, can, who can remember the place where everything is joyful and where everyone has, is there laughing and, and celebrating and there's no pain, no suffering? One little boy said, I know, it's Toys R Us. <laughs> maybe, maybe we could have more of that kind of joy as we celebrate the width of joy to all people. But I also talked about the depth of joy. The angel said, fear not. Do not be afraid. You see the joy that comes to us comes even in those things that tend to frighten us sometimes. Remember Jesus always appearing. Be of good cheer. It is I. Even in times of difficulty. The joy in the Old Testament, commentators tell us, was different. Com joy was a part of worship and celebration of freedom and of victory in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, joy comes even in spite of suffering. As we read the Apostle Paul, talks about all his sufferings, but how joy blossoms. And that's what it is for all of us, the depth of joy, joy over fear. Chinese have a proverb that says, one joy scatters a thousand griefs. And even Jesus, we read about in Hebrews, when he said, Jesus, who for the joy of it endured the cross. You see how even in suffering, Jesus found and taught us about joy. And we can learn to celebrate life, to laugh at those things that challenge us and know of God's continued love. There's an old baseball story told about Billy Martin and Mickey Mantle in their heyday when they were both heroes. And Mickey, it was off season and Mickey wanted to go hunting. And he invited Billy Martin to go with him. 
And he stayed out. We're going down to Texas. He says, a friend of mine who's a doctor who has a large farm, and he let us hunt on his farm. So they got there and rented a car and drove to the farm, and Mickey said, I'm going to go in and, uh, and let him know we're here. So he went up and asked the doctor if he could hunt. The doctor was very excited. He says, of course you can. Come, I, I'm so glad you can do that. He said, but Mickey, would you do me a favor? He said, that old mule you see standing yonder is, is old and sick, and he said, he just uh, is not going to live much longer. Would you take him out of his misery for me? I just don't have the heart to do it. Then he said, sure, I'll, I'll take care of it. So on the way back to his car, he thought, I'm going to have some fun with this. So he went up to Billy Martin, and he went up to his car and grabbed his gun out, and he said, he said we couldn't hunt here. I'm going to get even with him. So he went down and shot the mule. Bang! About that time, he heard three more shots. Bang! 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 He looked around, and Billy Martin said, I, shot, I got even with him, too. I shot, shot three of his cows. <laughs> I don't know if that story is true or not. <laughs> but the point is, if the wrong message gets the wrong result, the wrong message gets the wrong result, God's message to us is a message of joy, of life, of goodness and hope. Proverbs 17.22 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine. So in the midst of our difficult, challenging times, if we can find the joy that God gives us, that God promises us, we know of the goodness that's there. Jesus reminded us to focus on the beautiful things of life, the birds of the air, the flowers of the field, the lilies of the valley. He reminds us of the beautiful things that God has done for us. Someone found a papyrus, whether true or not, it, back in the excavation in Cairo. It said, Jesus on whom earth, who on peace said, wonder at the things before you. God calls us to wonder at the beauty, to enjoy what he does for us, and to find joy in the things of nature that God has made for us. The wise men rejoiced when they found the star. Mary rejoiced that God chose her. Jesus said, my joy is in you. John said, the church is a fellowship of joy. The Apostle Paul said, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as he faced his struggles. The man that Jesus healed leapt for joy. Again, the book of Hebrews, that Jesus, who for the joy of it, endured the cross. And then there's the height of joy, where the angel sang, to you is born this day a Savior. The Lord has come. Emmanuel means God with us, and that's something we can put in our pocket and take home with us. God is with us in all twists and turns of life, Victories and defeats, hopes and joys. God is there with us, for us, sharing life with us. Our catechism question is, what is the chief end of humanity? The chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. God's joy comes to you. That's what Advent is promise of Christ coming and giving us joy and hope. You're familiar with the story about Stevenson observed the lamplighter going through the old village 
And you could always tell where he'd been because it was a little lighter. He called it poking holes in the darkness. He observed that Christians ought to be like that. And when we think of joy, what better way to spread and share God's goodness than to bring joy into the lives of other people. Make an extensive effort to bring joy and to enlighten someone else's life and to show where we've been because we bring God's light, the light of joy, into them. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, we thank you that you give us joy. Help us to perceive it, to accept it, to exercise it, and to share it. Give us the guidance that we bring your joy and make the world a little better. We bring joy because Jesus came and died for us that we might have life abundant and eternal and joy evermore. In his name we pray. Amen. The hymn is 113, Angels We Have Heard on High. elements of joy. Go into God's world and know that God goes before you. And wherever you find yourselves, you're there by God's appointment, not by accident, but in the providence of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>